Hello and welcome to another of our Dental Business Transaction podcasts. Today I have huge pleasure in welcoming Dr. Simon Chard, a renowned cosmetic dentist and co-founder of Parlour Toothpaste Tabs, which we'll talk about later. Simon, welcome. Thanks for having me, Lily. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, Now, obviously, a little bit about yourself. I know that ethical cosmetic dentistry is very much your mantra. I know. Let's talk about some of your accolades. I'm going to blow your trumpet for you. I know. Best Best Young Dentist in London 2018 and overall UK in 2015 um, at the Dentistry Awards. And in 2020, you were voted the fourth most influential dentist in the UK. Well done for that. Thank you. Thank you. That was a nice surprise during the, uh, the pandemic lockdown. One of the few bits of positive news over that time. <laughs> I can say, I bet. And of course, you're a Br- British Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. You're a board director, yeah? Uh, yes, I'm president-elect. So I'm coming into presidency uh, at the end of this year, which is very exciting. Great, lovely. Um, so before we talk about particularly um, Parler, Let's talk about your background, Simon, and I want to hear about how you got into dentistry, because I know that it wasn't your first choice, was it? No, it's it's quite a funny story. So, yeah, both my parents are actually dentists. Um, Megan, my wife, and I bought the practice from them back in 2017. Um, And, yeah, for some reason, when I I mean, I always think it's a bit young in life to make the decision about what you're going to do for the rest of your life at age 16. Um, but obviously you do have to make that decision at that stage. Um, and at that point, I was, I think, particularly susceptible to the uh, the thought processes of my of my peers. And one of my peers uh, made it very clear that it was an awful idea to do the same thing, the same profession that your parents had done. And for some reason, that really stuck with me. So uh, off I went to do pharmacology um, at Bristol um, with a bit of a sort of an interest around physiology and biology and and. I won't say an interest around drugs, but a, a, an interest in, in that profession. Um, and it didn't take me long when I got to Bristol um, to realise that that wasn't the life for me to be spent uh, with sort of test tubes and pipettes in in laboratories. Um, and actually, coincidentally, my best friend, uh, Thomas Crawford Clark, who is still a very good friend of mine, um, was doing dentistry. And I saw the community that he had and sort of the sort of hands-on practical element alongside the scientific part of it and it was actually that that drove me back into the profession as opposed to obviously my my parents always being around me being dentists so um I I, I, at that stage I made the decision to do dentistry I I had a choice of either leaving the pharmacology degree and reapplying um, or just completing the pharmacology degree and then doing the fast track course uh, which is what I elected to do so I, I had a great time at Bristol partying and and enjoying the sort of student life and then by the time I came to King's to do my dentistry degree I was very much focused uh very sort of uh, polarized in in what I wanted to do and I think that gave me a unique uh outlook on the course and really allowed me to maximize the opportunities that I was presented with whereas a lot of the undergraduates who I was in competition with were still living that 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 primary undergraduate um thought process so yeah I guess that's um, sort of a, an important part of my my professional career. And did you know back then exactly the path you wanted or have you sort of you know moved around a little bit with you know because obviously cosmetic dentistry as we talked about earlier um, ethical dentistry was it always that or did you have any other swings of, of sort of where it's going to take you? Um, no, I mean, I, from very early on, I, I was a complete geek and um, I was, even, even pre-Facebook uh, forums and that sort of thing around dentistry, I was on a website called dentaltown.com, which was a sort of a American uh, website that um, people would show their cases and I would always be on the cosmetic dentistry uh, forum of that. Uh, and that's actually how I got involved with the BACD, um, Tiff Qureshi, as well as Jason Smithson at the time, um, were both quite active on there so as the only UK people that were active on it that naturally drew my attention um, and Tiff was doing all of this ABC uh, well ABB stuff sorry Align Bleach Bond stuff which I'd never been exposed to at dental dental school and I would tell all my friends about the fact that GDPs could do ortho and uh, you can just do a little bit of bonding you don't have to do veneers on everyone to get really nice cosmetic outcomes and Obviously, all, a lot of the tutors were like, "You don't know what you're talking about. You're an idiot." <laughs> um, but I got, I, I got, to, I got Tiff down to in my um, in my fourth year. Um, got Tiff down to do a presentation. Um, direct message him through the Dental Town 
direct message system, which seems just so archaic now. Um, and um, yeah, he came down, gave a great presentation. And I said, how can I get involved with what you're doing? And he was like, join the BACD. So I joined as an undergraduate. And um, yeah, that was um, uh, that was basically, well, 11 years ago now. And obviously this year I've become president. So it's it's a really it's a really exciting sort of transition and it's something that I've always had in my, in my crosshairs. So it's really great to be um, coming into that this year. Well done you. And it's interesting, isn't it? Cause you talked about your light bulb moment that you had when you decided that against, you know, your previous thoughts about doing the same as your parents, that, that you wanted to get into dentistry and the rest, as they say, is history. Um, and so far, and you're still very young, <laughs> <laughs> you know you have so much ahead of you which is very exciting isn't it and and where it can take you with with all the skills that you're acquiring and growing and sharing with people um obviously work takes up a huge part of your life and your BACD work but what about your passions and your hobbies Simon what keeps you happy when you're not working <laughs> well it's, it's funny you say that actually I, I gave I give quite a lot of talks to students and I was telling them I started a lecture the other day with dentistry is what I do it's not who I am um and I think that's a really important way for all of us to look at our our jobs because you never know especially in dentistry you might get you might get taken to the the GDC heaven forbid at any time and and lose your license and so I think it's really important to to have a strong framework around you but first thing that comes to mind when you ask the question is is just my family um I'm I'm very very um very much a family guy I've got two two little kids under four um, and um, obviously Megan and my wife and I work together, but we try and do a lot of traveling and um, sort of get as, as many life experiences under the belt as possible. Um, I think I'm probably guilty of having too many passions outside of dentistry um, to reel them off. Photography, um, DJing, playing my acoustic guitar, um, exercise is a massive part of my life. Um, yeah, lo- lots and lots of hobbies and passions, but um, I think... Um, my main focus when I'm not doing something work related and obviously I have quite a few things that fall under the work category with parlor and and BACD and and the practice and actually the the clinical dentistry side Uh, I try and really make a concerted effort to have some really quality family time around that and um, that's very important to me. I agree with you it is very important because a lot of people get so consumed with work and then they lose sight of themselves and their hobbies and interests. Um, and it is so good, isn't it? And, it, and of course, keeping up with the fitness. But of course, having two young kids under the age of four, I should think what you probably crave more for is a decent lie-in at the weekends, isn't it? <laughs> well, anyone anyone that follows me on it, on, uh, on social media will know that I, I wake up at 4.30, 4.45 in the morning. So uh, I, I have to find creative ways to pack um, exercise and and multiple businesses in around doing the the school run and um and spending time with the kids so yeah it's there's not a lot of um free time in my diary certainly <laughs> it's full on that's great now let's talk about parlor because i know that you're the co-founder of parlor because uh, parlor to- toothpaste tabs tell me about it how you started and where you are now yeah absolutely so um it, we've we've founded it uh, back now in 20, um, 2019. Myself, Dr. Rona Iskander, um, who many people will know, she's a high profile dentist, and Dr. Adash Thanki. Um, and we came together really with one focus in mind, and that was to eradicate single use plastic from oral care. Um, uh, around that time, um, I was being used by uh, brands like Oral B to promote their toothpaste uh, rona was being used by brands like sensodyne and philips to use to, to promote their products um and um although those companies make products that work they they obviously are a massive contributor to the single use plastic epidemic um every tube of toothpaste you've ever used still exists somewhere on the planet um they're made of single use plastic that lasts for 500 years so that's quite a shocking statistic and it's one that you really can't get out of your head once you've heard it um yeah, so um, that's obviously not a sustainable way for us to continue to to live our lives, uh, any of us. And so we we went about trying to find something that would deal with that problem, number one, but at the same time, continue to provide really effective oral care um, that meant that people didn't have to compromise on their oral health in order to protect the health of the planet. And that's actually why we came with the name Parla. Uh, Parla means pearl in Swedish. We felt that the pearl was the most sort of accurate 
uh, coming together of our two elements of the brand, the, the sort of ethical pearl of the ocean, protecting the oceans from single use plastic alongside pearly white smile, the dental sort of designed by dentist element of the brand. So we came together in 2019, as I say, we ended up launching the product in 2020 after a year of uh, work on the design, um, on the uh, the product formulation, the ingredients going into it. And um, so we spent a lot of time trying to get a really, really great product. Um, and yeah, we launched with toothpaste tablets, which was a format that I, I didn't know about until that time. Um, and since then, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, really, a bit of a, a rocket ship. Um, to to sort of fast forward to now, we, we've obviously been on Dragon's Den, which was an incredible experience. Um, we are now um, stocked in Sainsbury's and Boots um, and Ocado and soon to be another national retailer. Um, and we've got thousands and thousands of, of um, subscribers who receive their refills in compostable plant-based bags every four months. And they just refill a jar like this, um, which has the tablets in it. Uh, they just refill that. And then that, that plant-based bag can just go into the compost at home. Um, and so it's a, it's a truly sort of zero waste oral care solution. So yeah, I'm really, really proud, proud of where, we, where we've got to. Um, we've still got a long way to go. We're still going up against some of the biggest brands in the world. So it's, it's a big mission and, and we really are very, very, very grateful to have the dental profession behind us on that mission. We're, we're doing a big campaign with Sainsbury's at the moment called Don't Squeeze the Planet. And uh, uh, we've asked dental practices to have these big, uh, what we're calling toothpaste tube amnesty bins in their, in their practices to collect old used toothpaste tubes. And we're gonna turn them with this really cool company into, um, uh, into uh, everlasting uh, toothbrush handles with, with compostable heads to go on top of them. Um, and uh, the profession has just, just really grabbed us with, with both hands and it's been great to have hygienists and dentists all over the country and all over the world sort of supporting our, our ambitions for sustainable oral care. It's fantastic. And, you know, you're absolutely right in that it's just so unsustainable. It is shocking, the amount of waste. What's the competition like in, in the industry that, you, you know, you provided these little tabs? Um, talk me through them. Pop them in your mouth. Do you need much water in your mouth to get them going? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, they, they are, in, in essence, the format is a dehydrated toothpaste. So toothpaste in general is around 30 to 40 percent water, um, which is not, not a particularly eco-friendly way of, of designing a product anyway. Um, but yeah, so they're a little tablet. You pop it in your mouth, you chew for five seconds. You just need a little bit of water on the brush, bring that into the mouth, brush away as normal, and then off you go everything as, as, you, would, um, as you would do it normally. It takes a little bit of getting used to. We've removed the sodium laurel sulfate, um, which is the foaming agent made of palm oil. The reason we've removed that is that it's, it's an irritant in the mouth from our anecdotal experience as dentists. Um, but also um, it's made, as I said, of palm oil, which is um, integral to the deforestation issue that we have on our planet. So we've got a, a slightly milder foaming agent made of coconut oil, but it, it doesn't um, foam quite as much as the traditional sulfate-based foaming agent. So that takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, but apart from that, it's, it's business as usual, really, and um, provides all of the uh, effective ingredients that you need. So naturally, we're, we've got 14, 50 parts per million of fluoride. Um, we've, we've included all of the, the best ingredients that we could find, very, very natural ingredient, deck, no artificial flavorings or, or preservatives. Um, and then with our Parlor Pro tablets, which is our, our second sort of iteration, we've, we've thrown everything but the kitchen sink in there from all the best ingredients based on the latest science. So hydroxyapatite and potassium citrate for sensitivity. And, and we've even included vitamin B12 and, and uh, vitamin E in there. So, yeah, we've got a lot, a lot going. A lot go and, we, and we actually, the thing that we're learning really interestingly about the format is that we think it's actually a significantly better format than the traditional paste because it allows us as the dental professionals to prescribe the exact right amount of all the ingredients instead of people normally with their toothpaste just sort of putting 18 stripes of toothpaste on there um, and uh, who knows what dose of all the ingredients they're getting. We can control the form and the, and the dosage perfectly, which means that we can incorporate really interesting ingredients in there, which sort of fulfill full body wellness. But you said about the, the, the one that you're working on now, the Parla, did you just call it the Parla Pro? The, the second yes, one with, yes. the, with the vitamins? That's, that's, that's this one, yeah. So that's actually available now. It's been released. It's actually for sale. Excellent. What a yeah, great yeah, way yeah. to get those that's, that's, you know, extra vitamins and minerals and nutrition. 
It's really interesting, actually. So there's, there's some, it, it sounds like a gimmick. I think if I heard about it, I'd be like, oh, that sounds like a gimmick they're just throwing in there. Um, but actually, there's some really great randomized double blind controlled trials on vegan uh, vegan um, participants and also on elderly participants that showed that because of the high blood flow in the mouth, the absorption of these vitamins, because they're water soluble uh, through the gums as you're brushing your teeth, means that the blood level of those vitamins is, it gets to the same level as if you were to ingest it like a normal tablet. So we've included 50% of your RDA, your recommended daily allowance of both those two vitamins, and which means that if you brush twice a day, which hopefully you are doing, um, you're going to get those vitamins. And I mean, a lot of our customers are vegans because uh, we're a vegan brand and most toothpaste isn't vegan uh, because they test on animals and that sort of thing. Um, and so we know a lot of vegans because they don't eat meat products, they are vitamin B12 deficient. So this is a really nice way, as you say, of just sort of streamlining the morning routine. You don't have to think about taking your vitamin B12 supplement as well. You can just brush away and, and um, it'll just come through the gums, which is great. Great. And you talked about the flavourings of it. So what is the, how would you describe the flavour of the tablets currently that you're, you're prescribing there? Uh, so they're peppermint, so they've got a nice, a nice fresh minty flavour. We've sort of stuck. We didn't want to make too many changes because no. <laughs> we're aware that the the tablet form is a, is a big step, sort of mindset shift anyway. Um, so we we haven't sort of branched out into too much of um, wacky fla wacky flavours yet. Um, but anyway, no, it'll it's, happen. It's, How about bubblegum yeah. flavour? You're going to get someone coming to you with some <laughs> random request about what they. We're always have. we're always looking to um, to listen to our consumers. So um, yeah, whatever people want, let me know. But. At the moment, it's it's a it's a it's a natural peppermint flavor um, from from peppermint oil. So it's 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 all very um, as I say, anywhere that we could we could use a fully natural ingredient, we've used it. Um, we really have a big focus on the ingredients going in here. Well, well done. It's a remarkable thing, and I'm definitely going to be getting some. I can tell you now. Oh, um, thank you. Do you um, are you exporting it? I ask because my daughter lives in New Zealand, and this is right up her street. She's very <laughs> much into environmental issues and. She's always ticking me off where I'm getting it slightly wrong at home. So is it in New Zealand? <laughs> uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not in New Zealand currently. I think we're, we're still a small team. I mean, um, we've just hired the um, uh, the ex-brand uh, director for Oral-B UK uh, as our managing director. So we that was our, one of our latest big hires. But um, we're, still a, we're still a small team and we wanted to make sure that we really cracked the format in the UK first. We do have a small distributor in... Um, in the Middle East, um, but our primary focus is towards the UK at the moment, and um, just getting getting everything perfect there first before we spread our wings too far. I mean, uh, because of the international network of dentists that both Rhoda and myself has have a sort of on our friend friend list, um, there's been lots of demand internationally for the product. Um, so we'd love to we'd love to obviously the the bigger we get the more tubes we save and so the bigger impact we have on the environment um but at the same time we don't want to sort of try and grow too fast and then fall because we're not delivering the customer service or the quality of the product or, or anything like that well i'll be the first one out there with new zealand for you when i go out to see her later on this year all being well i'll, I'll take jealous. some out as a gift she'll love it well one, one of my favorite places place. new zealand yeah. lovely oh, lovely place <laughs> That's really exciting. And, and you really are genuinely, you've come up with a, a great product, but it's actually such an important issue. Um, and so do you um, personally, are you doing much uh, sort of branding with it, with advertising shows, exhibitions? What are you, what's your personal involvement or are you just relying upon the, the normal marketing for this, Simon? So we've, we've done a lot. Of, I mean, we've been very lucky to get some great PR um, over the last two years. Um, we've had a really... Uh, great PR team and, and I think the press are really engaged in this sort of topic um, any sort of as you say your daughter tells you off for making the wrong decisions in sustainable terms and I think lots of people feel that way and I, I wasn't aware of the issue with toothpaste tubes until I made myself aware about it so there's still so much for us to do with regards to opening people's eyes to this issue because as I say once you've heard that every tube still exists somewhere on the planet. It's you just you can't carry on like that. Um, so the PR has been great. We we do quite a lot of sort of Facebook and performance ads. Um, and with regards to going to shows, yeah, I mean absolutely. The dental profession, getting them on board with this is in for me personally, it's one of the most important things for me. Um, and there's there's a few ways we're doing that. So I'm actually at the BDIA this this weekend, 
Um, so we'll be there for both days there. Um, and then I'm also doing a big uh, lecture roadshow um, with Den Plan across the country. I think it's going to be about a thousand dentists in total that I'm lecturing to. Uh, doing a lecture on digital dentistry as well. Uh, very kindly sponsored by Dance by Serona, but also Parlour is, is is sort of sponsoring the whole event as well. And um, I'm going to be sort of alerting them to to the issue. And we really want dentists to 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 grab sustainability by the horns and and sort of uh, make these changes within their own clinics because we are a very wasteful profession in general. Not always to our own fault it's through the. The restrictions placed upon us for cross infection control as well but there are changes that we can make to be more sustainable in our businesses and then also we have the ear of ten thousand patients each or whatever your patient numbers are um and they value our opinion greatly so i think that's the really key thing for me with parlor was to make a really credible product that dentists and hygienists would realize that there's no negative for their patients in moving to this product there's only upsides with regards to the quality of the ingredients and the sustainable nature of the packaging. And as I say, everything on this, even the ink is non-toxic dye. The glue is fully biodegradable and, and non-toxic to plants. I've really, from, from the ground up, tried to build, to build a truly sustainable product and not like a green washy product. Because it's just, firstly, what's the point? And secondly, there's so many of those out there. So... I really wanted to make sure that it, it delivered on all angles and, and hopefully the profession agrees that we've done that. Um, and obviously you mentioned it's available in, in leading supermarkets and is available as well online or do you have to get them through those mediums? No, absolutely. So we we have, um, we have started as a direct consumer brand really. Um, so we have uh, either you can buy single units uh, through our website, parlortoothpastetabs.com or you can subscribe um, to the four monthly refills um, and we're available obviously online on Amazon and, and all those other sort of normal places that you'd find toothpaste. Well I think it's a remarkable thing and I think you're definitely you're pushing an open door with the whole product because people are becoming so much more aware but you know you hear a lot about you know bamboo uh, sustainable toothbrushes but you're not hearing I'm not hearing about the actual tooth cleaning so this is I think revolutionary um, and well done Thank you. and that's fantastic so what plans for 2022 going forward? I mean, obviously, Parlour keeping you busy. You're still working as a clinician. You've got a young family, you know, everything else you've touched upon. But what, what other ambitions have you got yet to fulfil and planning ahead? Yes, I mean, uh, as I say, obviously, Parlour's taking up a lot of my time um, and, and that's a big focus for me this year. BACD um, coming into presidency there, we're really focusing on delivering just unique top quality entertainment i'm really excited to be honest with you just getting back to events i'm really looking forward to the bdia this weekend i'm going to be at the dentistry show as well um and just seeing people again i haven't I, we had the bacd conference in november but that was the only sort of dental event that i've been to so i'm really looking forward to this road show with them plan and and uh, delivering lectures again uh clinically for myself I'm, I'm really focusing on 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 my dental implant therapy at the moment i'm really enjoying that side of things um been sort of pushing my um uh, my skill set there with with in, improving my um my postgraduate education in that regard so I've, I've been enjoying that but um yeah no i'm really looking forward to it it's gonna be a good year i think it's been it's great talking to you and i wish you all the very best going forward i will be seeing you at all the shows you mentioned and on the road show <laughs> as well with dem plan so oh, we good. look forward to seeing you and supporting you in any way we can um dr simon shard thank you so much for your time today and um, I think you're a remarkable man. I think that you have oh, a great product there um, and well done with everything that you're currently doing. It's so important. And it, it's, it's important that people like yourself actually make a difference. So that's, oh, that's good great, to hear. That's very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers.